are you doing today? These are trying times, but we have to believe in the power of the collective, and each and every one of you is a part of that collective to bring tremendous change, not only for the benefit of our community, but for the benefit of this country and for the benefit of the planet. Today, we're going to have this amazing rally here, and I want to introduce, we're going to be introducing some amazing speakers and voices on the front line of climate change. This is a rally to ask or to demand the protection of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Higher up. Okay, there we go. I don't want to blow out you guys' ears there. Sorry. I'm a document. My name is Dallas Goldtooth. I'm an organizer. I'm the national uh, Keep It in the Ground campaigner for the Indigenous Environmental Network. I'm Dakota and Dene, and I'm so ha happy to be here. I'm so proud to be here in this space. So before we start, we're going to actually, uh, before we actually start the formal rally, we're going to start off with some, a song. Uh, we have some singers that come from uh, Guichin Nation from up north, and they're going to be offering us a song to start us off for this prayer in at this moment. Then we have our speakers after that. So I'm going to ask um, our speakers to sing a song for us at this time. Thank you. singers this struggle this fight has been going on for generations this this fight to protect the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and to protect the sacred this is not just about the land itself it's also about the life that depends on the land about the porcupine caribou herd and the people that depend on that herd for their subsistence lifestyles and so we want to really acknowledge these voices and we have some re representatives and elected leaders here who are wish to speak um, and so we're going to have our first up Senator Warren is Senator Warren come on up let's give a round of applause for Senator Elizabeth Warren thank you I'm glad you're all here this morning this is an important cause and Congress believes that they can open up the Arctic Refuge, and that they can do this without the American people knowing. What's happening is that the first American people are showing up to say that will not happen. They will come to speak for our Earth. I'm here this morning to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who are here to fight. I'm here also to say I support you, and I will fight alongside you and to say I am here to honor you. You are here for the right reason, to protect our Mother Earth. So thank you all for being here. Be strong, be on the hill today, and make sure your voices are heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, a couple more uh, senators coming up. Senator Udall is going to be coming on up, and then we'll have Senator Merkley after. So round of applause for Senator Udall here. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I uh, had the wonderful privilege yesterday of meeting with all of these uh, wonderful Gwich'in Nation people, and it was a, a very, very moving experience. And the lesson that they have told to us is that not only is this uh, a, a incredible ecosystem where they live, but they're completely dependent on it. And many of the people behind me are hunters. Uh, they're subsistence livers. They put in uh, a, 
number of caribou for the whole season in order to feed themselves. They use every single bit of the caribou. And so this is a, this is a, um, a very respectful nation that tries to get along in the community they're in. And I'm kind of reminded of Aldo Leopold, who once said something along the line, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, you know, if we quit treating the world as a commodity and we treated it more as a community, then maybe we would really uh, be in touch and be connected with the earth. And, and that's what the Guijin nation does, that's what the Guijin people do. And Bernadette, please take the message back to your elders and to all of the the religious leaders and others that I know are back in Alaska and in Canada, uh, that we are standing with them. Make your voices heard today, and we really look forward to working with you to make sure that the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and the Coastal Plain are not open to oil and gas drilling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to have Senator Merkley up. I, last time I saw Senator Merkley, I'll let this fire truck pass. Last time I saw the senator was actually in the halls uh, at COP23 in Bonn, Germany. Uh, a lot of our folks there, the Indigenous Environmental Network, worked to bring a, de a delegation of Indigenous peoples there into that space because whenever there's a conversation about climate change, you have to have voices from the front lines in those spaces, especially indigenous peoples who often have to deal with the climate chaos that has happened all across this planet. I uh, ask the Senator, please thank you for being here and offer some words. Thank you. Well, greetings everybody. I'm so glad you are here to draw attention to such an important battle. All, all across the world right now, bad things are happening in the natural world. We see melting permafrost and disappearing glaciers. Glacier National Park in the United States has gone from 150 glaciers to 25. We see coral reefs around the world dying. Uh, we see fierce forest fires at a level that didn't happen before and stronger hurricanes. And the Arctic is changing faster than the rest of the of the world, the temperature fluctuations that are occurring. And in the midst of that, we should be doubling down on our protection for the Arctic, doing more than we have been doing. But instead, we have this, this basically this uh, monster, this fossil fuel monster that wants to eat up everything wants to extract every bit of coal and oil and gas and burn it. And if that monster survives, the world doesn't. And here, this battle is about a very particular special place. And I've been getting educated about the calving grounds for the porcupine caribou and how important that is and the overlap between the disruption that will occur with this oil drilling and the impact on the caribou and the way of life for the nation. And so let's tell this story broadly. How many of you are going up to Capitol Hill to help share this story while you're here? Few? Thank you. I mean, every single office uh, carry this message of protecting the Arctic refuge. You have your, your blue signs and the symbol of the caribou. Uh, this is uh, part of a big battle for our Mother Earth, for our beautiful blue-green planet. Uh, but let's make sure we win this particular piece of this battle. It's been decade after decade after decade that the, the oil industry is wanting to do more disruption uh, tear up more of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, we have stopped them until now. So let's make sure we win this victory and make it one of many victories for a, a beautiful, balanced, uh, sustainable planet. And so thank you. Thank you for being in this battle. I'm in the battle with you. And uh, we can win this. 
and let's do it. Thank you. This struggle goes back generations. And it's these individuals before that you see here that have been holding the line. 95% of the Arctic Slope is already open for oil development. And right now they're trying to get to the last remaining 5%. And we can't let that happen. We have to stop. It. We have to stop and draw the line here. Are you with me? We have our, our first speaker coming up, Jeffrey Peter Vuntuk Gwichin from Old Crow, Yukon Territory. So give a round of applause for Jeffrey here. Wasi Cho for coming, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Peter, and I'm Vuntuk Gwichin from Old Crow, Yukon. Um, I just want to start off by saying that uh, I'm here representing the Gwichin Nation. And as a nation, we span borders, we span boundaries, because we share values that go back thousands of years. And my father was born in Alaska. Um, my grandfather was from Alaska. And after my grandfather died, when my father was four years old, my grandmother moved back to Canada to be with her family and uh, to, in order to survive. And a big part of our survival, the main reason for our survival for all these thousands of years has been the porcupine caribou herd and um, we've co-evolved with them and the caribou have evolved to utilize the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge as their nursery, their birthing grounds. It is the most vital part of their entire habitat and we share the fate of the caribou. I. Uh, I'm not a politician, I'm not a public speaker, I'm just an individual who cares about this very deeply. This means everything to me, and it means everything to my people. I'm just a hunter, a person that lives in the Yukon, and uh, just carrying on a simple life, and I'm carrying on the tradition and the values that have been passed on from my father to me, and that goes back generations and thousands of years and uh, I am going to be a father in a few months. My first child is going to be born. Thank you. And I deserve the right to pass on these knowledge, this knowledge and these traditions that have been carried through generations and thousands of years and these survival strategies are as important back then as they are today because we're still carrying on these practices. This is not something that uh, used to take place that we harvest caribou and like Senator Udall said, we utilize all parts of the caribou. That's knowledge and techniques and experience that have allowed us to survive for thousands of years and we need that now just as much as we ever did because our identity is tied to the caribou. And we need that identity in order to carry forward and survive in this modern world where things are changing so quickly. And we're seeing that firsthand in the north with climate change and with these large scale changes that are really, it just seems so far away. I feel the world away right now where I am from, from my home. And it's, uh, it's just something that I feel so passionately about I just had to come down here and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you people from all different walks of life coming here and sharing that passion and understanding the importance of this to just someone like myself who I grew up with this. This is all I've ever known and I want to be able to pass this on to my child and to my grandchildren one day and know that this will give them the strength to carry on in their lives and pass it on for generations to come. And you guys are all part of that. And Haik Cho, Masi Cho for being here. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Jeffrey. Our next speaker is Adrian Titus of the Inupiaq Nation, 
works at the University of Alaska. Oh, oh, sorry, Representative Lowenthal. I, my apologies. Actually, we have a representative come on up. Um, round of applause for Representative Lowenthal, who's going to share some words with us. And thank you for all our elected leaders coming out and standing in support. Well, thank you. Thank you for all coming out in support. But thank you for the Gwich'in Nation and the Gwich'in for coming and sharing with us your stories and the importance of what we're here today for. You, you know, this is, we, as we've all heard and we all know, this is one of the last places on this planet that has relatively and is almost free of, of development. And uh, it's a place where there are just, you know, as we know, hundreds of species of birds and animals. And we've, if we destroy by drilling and, and uh, exploitation of the land, we're going to lose the porcupine caribou. And we've heard all about that, how important. But make no mistake, what this is really why we're here is to say to the Republicans who want to sell the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to oil companies for a vote on a tax bill. That's why we're doing this. This is not in the best interest of the people. This is not in the best interest of the planet. This is not because of what we care about to protect the culture and to protect the future generations from the exploitation of this planet. This is all about getting a vote on, the t on a tax bill. We are not going to stand for that. We are, n we are here to say, members of Congress, that we are with you. This is, we are standing together. This is one of the most crassest exploitation of this planet and the destruction of this planet, and we're just not going to stand for it. So I'm so proud to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much uh, to the representative, and you know we really need action now. This is um, a critical moment in this struggle, and uh, thank you for the representative and all our elected leaders who come and stand in support with the Gwich'in people and the Nupiaq people of, the, of up in Alaska. Our next speaker is Adrian Titus of the Nupiaq Nation, works with the University of Alaska Fairbanks Department of Alaska Native Studies and Rural Development. Round of applause for Adrian. Thank you. Adrian Titus. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Akaluk in English. My name is Adrian Titus. I am Inupiaq. Uh, a lot of you are hearing a lot of propaganda in the news about the Inupiaq people supporting the opening of the drilling in the Arctic Refuge. And I just want to remind you all that these are corporations that are speaking on behalf of our people. This is money speaking on behalf of our people. And we are here. I, I am here to represent the Inupiaq people and to say that we we are not in support of the drilling or the opening of the Arctic Plains. As a as an Inupiaq woman, as a mother, as a subsistence hunter and gatherer, as a person of the land, I, I want to speak out of, about our people. Um, many of us stand together in solidarity with the Gwich'in Nation in opposition of the drilling of the Arctic Refuge. That false propaganda is coming forward and you're hearing voices that are are not the right voices to be heard, to be spoken about representing our people. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here today and standing in solidarity with us in this fight against the opening of this drilling and the desecration of our land. Um, our people have survived since time immemorial off the land and off of the waters and the, the things that they provide for us and our, our future. We want to say thank you, Kleana, for being here. And um, on behalf of the Inupiaq people, I really, really am humbled uh, to be able to speak out and to be able to represent 
such a beautiful, beautiful uh, country that that I come from. Uh, I feel even lost for words right now because the place I come from is so sacred and so beautiful to to not only be kept um, protected, but for now, but for future generations to come, because this is gonna sustain not only our people, but the rest of the world. We travel all over to come together and to speak out about this because the the untouched and the, the pristine land in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge will continue to sustain the rest of this planet. Uh, they say that it's the beginning of life for the Gwich'in people, but not only for them, for, but for the rest of us. So thank you all for being here today, and we hope that you continue to stand in solidarity with us in this fight. Playana. Thank you. We're going to have our, um, our local representative of the Piscataway Nation, um, Sebi Tayak, come on up and join us on stage. So in our way, uh, we always pay recognition as indigenous peoples to whose land we're on. And we always do so in this space in Washington, D.C. So um, we have, uh, Sebi's going to have share some words, but also um, representatives of the, the Guchin Steering Committee are going to offer some words of, of gratitude and tobacco for, for being in the territory of the Piscataway peoples. Thank you. Um, Thank you all for being here. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real honor and a real pleasure to be here, standing with you, standing beside you. My name is Sebi um, Medina Tayak, a linguist. I'm from the Piscataway people, and we're the original people um, of what is now Washington D.C. and Maryland. Most of our people live in what is now Southern Maryland, and um, but our ancestors are everywhere here. Every time you take a step, you could be standing over somebody, an ancestor that's in the ground anywhere you are in this city, and that's something people don't often think about. And um, I try to act in a way that's accountable to them, because I'm here because of them. They didn't forget me, so I can't forget them. So they're here right now with us, and they're here especially with you all in this fight. This is a righteous fight. And it's a fight that we're going through, too. Uh, we have a pipeline that's crossing the Potomac River and threatens our, our drinking water here in this area, as well as our tribal lands, too, where people do survive off of the water and off of the land. So um, what you're doing resonates with me. And um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to speak here um, in front of you all. Uh, I just wanted to offer a, a welcome um, there's no blessing for me that's necessary. I'm just a simple person. Um, you're the blessing to me. You're the blessing to our people by being here and showing us that this fight is not just uh, for us. This fight is in Canada. This fight is in the United States. And this fight is all over the hemisphere. So um, I just wanted to offer a short song. It's written by my friend Mish. Connolly and he's uh it's it's in a eastern Algonquin dialect, which is what was spoken here.
that song means um, seek peace within and without. And as we know, uh, peace is not an action. Peace is not stagnation. Peace is action. And peace is action for justice. Thank you all very much. Um, hi, my name is Bernadette Dementif. Um, I'm so cold, I almost never said my name. Um, I'm the executive director for the Gwich'in Steering Committee. On behalf of my people, my fellow Alaskans and Canadians, we want to say thank you for welcoming us onto the land you occupy. And we have tobacco here to offer. Thank you. We say thank you very much on behalf of our people and ourselves. Um, I'm, I just want to stand here and humbly say thank you to everybody that came, to our senators, to our representatives. I'm here on the direction of my elders on behalf of the Gwich'in Nation of Canada and Alaska to get the tax, to stop this tax bill, to take the Arctic Refuge out of, the re out of this bill that's going to change our lives forever. The Gwich'in Nation and the Porcupine Caribou Herd have been entwined as one since the beginning of time. It's hard to come down here and fight for our human rights this way. We have fellow Alaskans that are standing with us, that have flew down here, that left the comfort of their homes. I have, this is an amazing crew. Um, we just want to continue to live our way of life. We're not asking for anything. We just want to continue to have our food security, to have healthy land, to have healthy animals to hunt. We have been living in this area for over four, we've been migrating with the porcupine caribou herd for over 40,000 years. The coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to my people is called Ijikwatsangundaigutlit, the sacred place where life begins. That should say in itself what it means, not just to us, but to so many people across the country that, that, that are standing with us. People that are the rake of decisions down here in Washington, D.C. that are going to affect our future. People that don't ever, that will never understand our way of life. So we're down here and we're making a stand and we're demanding that our human rights be respected. We're demanding that you honor our human rights. We are the First Nations of that area. And we want to be, continue to li be left to live the way we've always have. I come down here and I see the, the changes. It's so busy. Alaska is still so very unique. The Arctic Refuge is so unique. And I'm just, please stand with us and please help us stop this bill. Let's see each other on behalf of my people of Canada and Alaska. Our singers are going to offer us another song here as we prepare to close out. We're going to offer this song and then we'll have some closing remarks.
say thank you. Um, that song, it's uh, it's a uh, Keru Chutza. It's uh, from my, I'm from Arctic Village. My name is Donald Trick. It's a song that we use for our welcoming dance. Um, when we start our performances and we welcome the caribou into the caribou, it's a caribou hut dance. Um, we use it for welcoming and saying thank you and um, blessing of uh, traveling with the caribou herd. So uh, I'd like to say thank you for coming and you guys have a really good day. Thank you very much. Round of applause for our singers. We're going to ask, them, we're ask all of our folks up here to come on step forward here, right into the middle of the stage. This tax bill needs to be stopped. Yes. It needs to be stopped for a, a number of reasons. It is bad for our uh, communities of color, for low-income families across this country. It is also bad for the people in the Arctic Refuge.